Friends, what do you see in that cloud, man? I don't know, duck, heart, bird, I don't know. And he'd say, I mean, I see skulls. So he, he, worked, he worked for a company where they, 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 sent him, they, they practiced what's called um, Santa Ria, or, or uh, um, what was it? It was, um, they practiced what's called, um, they worship the angel of death, the Santa Muerta. So he practiced what's called Santa Muerta. They, and they, the company practiced it. They knew it was wrong, but they, they did it anyways because they wanted to grow, go up in the company. They wanted to make money more. And they, they, they wanted, he says, we don't, they say in the company, they say, we don't live long, but we live rich. And so, so he did it for his family in his mind, right? And so, so he tells me, he says, Asa, his side started hurting. He had to go to the, to the gate because down there the prisons are like a city behind walls. The cops don't even come in but three or four times a year and they come in with the military and they walk up on a catwalk up on top of the walls with masks on so that even before COVID so the company can't see them and kill them and, 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 extort, their, and, and, and extort them to get free. So uh, he says he goes to the gate and he's like, man, you guys got to take me to Cruz Roja because my side's hurting. And they said, no, nah, I mean, get out of here. He said, man, Asa had to shoot up more heroin and more heroin, and my side started hurting more. And, and finally, after about three days, he crawls to the gate, and they take him to the Cruz Roja and down in prison in Mexico. And so he says, uh, he says they take him to Cruz Roja, and the nurse tells him, oh, you know, we got to get you into surgery right now. Your appendix burst three days ago. And he goes, so he goes into surgery, and, and he said, Asa, it was like I was falling through space, but there were no stars. I couldn't see myself, but I knew I was there. I was falling really far, really fast for a long ways. He says he was trying to hang on to something, but there was nothing to hang on to. And then he said he could smell it and he could hear them. He said they're all on fire. He says, and, and, and he, so he's screaming, Jesus, ayúdame, yo no quiero entiendo. Jesus, ayúdame, yo no quiero entiendo. Jesus, save me, I don't want to go to hell. Jesus, save me, I don't want to go to hell. And then he wait, he stops, he says. And he said, they, they couldn't quite reach him. He said, they were all on fire. He said, man, they were trying to pull me in. Am I going to go to hell or not? Am I going to go to hell or, or not? And I said, sir, I'm, I can't answer that question for you. That's not for me to decide. But I can tell you one thing. I don't think they were trying to pull you in. I think they were trying to pull themselves out. So he quit the company, quit killing people, got the tattoo removed, and started going to church. So, the Lord God, God is compassionate. He is gracious and slow to anger. But there's no such thing in Scripture called unconditional love. People will say, uh, if you were to learn about the attributes of God, yes, one of His attributes is love. But there's no such thing as unconditional love. Not in Scripture. If, if Remember, like I say, if, if love without justice isn't love, we're God too. When we say God is perfect, we mean that not only is He sinless and perfect and pure, but perfect in all of His attributes, He doesn't suspend one or all the other to exercise the one. He doesn't suspend His justice to exercise His love. He doesn't suspend His justice in order to exercise His mercy or grace or forgiveness. All of His attributes work when all of His attributes work. He doesn't suspend any of them. He's not confused. He's not, he's not, uh, truck, man, I really want to be nice to you, but I got to be disciplining you uh, or, or put, give you my justice, my, satisfy my justice on you. So what it is is when we say God is perfect, we mean that, that he's not compartmentalized. He's not made up of a bunch of parts. He's perfect. And all of his attributes are perfect. We're God to just forgive us because, because he wanted to exercise his love and not his justice, then that would mean that his love was unholy or unrighteous. He's not like us at all. He's nothing like us. So, when, when you hear these people, they say, oh, my God would never do that. Well, that's because you don't believe in God or the Bible. People will get very angry when you teach them about the attributes of God because they believe in false gods, most of them. They create for themselves. God created us in His image and we return the favor. 
Most people worship a false Jesus. Not the church. We all worship the true Jesus. But most people deceive themselves into thinking they worship Christ. Deceive themselves into thinking they believe in Jesus. They deceive themselves into thinking they're saved when, when they're not. Because unless your belief and reliance is upon the God of the Bible, then, then it's not the true God. So a lot of people I see, them they, they make up this false God of love. Oh, my God's love. It's all love. Well, let me, like I've given that, I just gave the, the example. I'll give it again because there's new people. If, I, if you go home and you find that your, 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 your family's been slaughtered by Jeffrey Dahmer and you, you go and you, you take, and you, you knock the guy down and you get your kid away from him and then you tie him up and the cops come and they take him to jail and if the judge gets up there and says, I'm compassionate, I'm gracious, I'm slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. And the judge says, I, 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 I let you go. You're free to go. I'm going to exercise my love to you. You're free to go. I forgive you. Take care. Have a nice day. Is that love? No. That's not love. That's wickedness. That's more wicked than the guy that did it. So... This is why the cross and understanding the gospel is so absolutely vital. Why? Because when I find out, because you can't know anybody until you know what they've done. So the more we study what he's done and who he is, the more we fall in love with him. And it's, 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 it's through, it's through the, the power of this gospel that, that, that God has chosen to save people. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for those who believe. And belief is a gift. Faith is a gift. But how does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You want more faith? Read the Bible more. You show me the condition of your Bible, I will rightly judge the condition of your soul. Now, you, let's say you can't read that well, and there's, there are some. Guess what? Well, I listen to the audio Bible. When I'm, when, I'm, when I'm doing stuff, like here, cleaning up around here, and I, I can't be walking around the Bible in my hand, I turn on the audio Bible. I like to go to sleep with the audio Bible on in my ear in my earbuds. Man, that's the best way to sleep right there. That is the best way to sleep. Because you will be sanctified. Jesus said, sanctify them, Father, by your truth. Your word is truth. Sanctify means to be made more holy, hence more like God. And, and so when you take a, an object, right? Take these glasses. These work really good when you put them on your head. Right? But now if I take these glasses and I go and I try to go fishing with them, catch a fish with them, like a hook maybe, probably not going to catch that much fish, right? Why? Because that's not what they're made for. A fish hook's good and they work great when you use them right. We were made for God. We were made for Him, by Him. So we weren't made for ourselves. We weren't made for your best life now. We weren't made for, for, for you being happy. The goal of life isn't me being happy. The goal of life, the chief end of man, is to glorify and honor God. If you want your best life now, guess what? It will be. Because the next life ain't going to be fun. We were made for God by God. Which stands to reason, logic would say, okay, I'm made by God, for God, then all of my problems and all of their solutions are theological in nature. Meaning, theos, again, comes from the Greek word God, and so we get the word theology, so you have theos and then logos, which means the study of or discourse of, so you have theology, meaning the study or discourse of God. So... When I say that my problems are theological in nature, I mean biblical theology, because it's the only true theology. And just for, so, so you guys know that the, the Bible is the most ancient copied piece of literature on the planet. Nothing even comes remotely close. There's the three top number, the top three most ancient copied pieces of literature on the planet. It's not the Bible, the Quran, the writings of Buddha. No, no, those two aren't even on the list. It's the Bible, 
with 36,000 original manuscripts for the New Testament alone, written on three continents and three languages over a 1,600-year period of time, 66 books, 41 authors, 26.7% prophetic in content, meaning it speaks of future events, has 100% accuracy, written in 11 different literary forms and for by eight different occupations, from kings to peasants to prophets to fishermen. And yet, they all speak of the same God, the same plan of redemption. Try that with any other, any other group of books on the planet and see if you have any kind of diversity in that. It just, it's impossible. But there's 36,000 original manuscripts for the New Testament alone. Coming in at number two, at a very 